What's up guys? I hope you guys are having an awesome, wonderful day and welcome back to another episode and hopefully you guys are really benefiting from this beautiful, uh, I mean, I guess it's beautiful course that you guys get so far. I hope, as you know guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Sad Basim. I'm here to help you to make money with Amazon FBA and also what we're doing is actually releasing all the private label course for free for you guys to benefit for you to know what to expect and exactly what uh, how to become successful in Amazon FBA, especially with the private label. So, uh, this episode is going to be about patent versus trademark and what are the differences. And uh, I hope you guys are really uh, tune in and watch that video because it's going to be very important uh, for you not to launch a product that's been patented or trademark and then you lose all your money. So this is happens, happens so many times, happened to me, happened to many people that I, a lot of people that I know. So you need to be really uh, careful, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. And um, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody. Welcome again, guys, to another video. And today we're going to talk about patents versus trademark and understanding the trademark versus trade uh, patent and what does that mean for everyone. So let's go ahead and jump in it right away and let's talk about it. So, guys, if you want a trademark explanation or resources and you want to find out about trademark, specific trademark or specific patent, you need to go to www.uspto.gov. I'm going to share with you uh, some uh, some tips, how to be able to find it, what trademark means, what patent means, and we're going to go walk through it with a live demo later on. Uh, so a patent for an invention is issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office, which is basically a abbreviation of uspto.gov. Uh, it grants property rights to the inventor, which means the right to exclude others from making, using, offering for sale or selling the invention in the United States or importing the invention into this United States uh, source, uspto.gov. So basically, if I have a product that patented, I'm not able to sell that product because it has a patent. There's the original patent owner uh, doesn't want me to sell it. It doesn't give me exclusivity or doesn't give me the right to sell that product. I'm not going to be able to sell it in the States, especially if, if, especially if they filed for patent in the United States itself. So even if the product is being sourced somewhere else and the patent in the US, I cannot import that product in the US and try to sell the product. It's going to be I'm infringing on that patent and I can get sued. So there's two types of patents. And I think this is very important. There's something called utility patent versus design patent. Let's talk about utility patent. A utility patent may be granted to anyone who invent or discovers any new and useful process, the machine, article of manufacture, or composition of matter, or any new and used improvement. Therefore, whatever source USP.gov, a patent can be granted for an improvement on an already patented product. What does that mean? In proper English, uh, is basically, let's say I have my own, um, let's say, Let's say I have my cell phone. Now, if I have a, a utility patent, is basically a device that I'm able to call with, with a big screen, let's say the utility patent. That means the use of that specific thing that called cell phone is to call people with. Now, if anybody tried to replicate any phone that you can call people with, and there's a patent on it, you cannot sell that product because that's utility patent. It's about using the product itself. The same thing, let's say if we have a scooper for sand scooper, okay? And we go ahead and start scooping sand with that specific tool and there's a patent on it, you cannot use that specific tool because it has utility patent. Anything that scoops sand and put it into somewhere, that's utility patent, you cannot use it, okay? So if there's a utility patent, it's very hard uh, to get around it, unlike design patent. So design patent may be granted to anyone who invent a new original and ornamental design for an article of manufacture, the source of USP.gov. So basically, let's say if someone has design patent on that specific phone, he says, hey, anybody who has a phone, anybody who has a phone, um, if it's a square and has, I don't know, multiple four points or four corners, you're not able to create a phone with four corners and rectangular like this way. But if I wanted to uh, get around this, I can build a phone instead of being rectangular, I can make it round or I can make it have 
five corners or maybe have a six corners. That's this design pattern. That's how you can get through the design. If you change a little bit into something in the design, if someone has a design pattern, you change something in it a little bit that makes it different than the design pattern itself, you'd be good to go. So utility pattern is the use of the product. Okay, I'm drinking water from that specific cup. That's utility pattern. That means you cannot use anything or call the cup and drinking water from it. That's utility pattern. And design is about the design of the cup itself. Is it round? Is it rectangular? Is it twisty? If someone has a design pattern on uh, a cylindrical uh, product or cylindrical cup, and you come, you come in and you do it rectangular, you're good to go because it has only design pattern, okay? Now, let's talk about the trademark. A trademark is, is different than patent. Patent, we talked about the use of the product itself, about the design, about the use of the product. Now a trademark. A, tra a trademark is a word, name, symbol, or device that's used in a trade with goods to indicate the source of the goods and, its, um, and to distinguish them from the goods of others. So what does that mean in English? Is basically, if we have, we can trademark a name, we can trademark a logo or a symbol or a slogan. So for example, McDonald's. In McDonald's, we have the art, uh, the name itself, McDonald's, that could be trademark. Or you have the logo, which is the arches. And also you have the slogan, which is I'm loving it. The other example, we have a Starbucks. A Starbucks is the name. That means you can trademark the name. You can trademark the logo itself, but they don't have a slogan. But here in, um, in Starbucks, they have a trademark on the color itself, the green. So anybody who makes a coffee with that kind of green shade, you're not able to sell that product, especially in coffee. So the color also can be trademark. So this is our trademark. If we are as a private label products and we have a brand, usually we're gonna start with the name first. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say my name, let's say Amazon FBA Giants. Let's say that's Amazon FBA Giants we have here. Amazon FBA Giants, the name itself is gonna be trademark. Then you can do uh, Amazon FBA Giants, the logo itself. And then if you have a slogan, which is, you know, let's make it happen. All right. These are three things that trademark can, can be trademarked. Okay. And that's all what you need to care about. For most of us is going to be a word mark or word trademark, which is the name itself. And also, as I said, this applies to the name, logo and slogan, as we just showed you right now. Now, Violating a trademark and patent laws counterfeiting can result in products being seized at custom before entering the US or the patent or the trademark holder may file a dispute against the offending party if the product is already for sale on Amazon, forcing the listing to be suppressed and the removal of the products. And on top of that, it's illegal to sell counterfeit products on any platform or marketplace in the US. So what does that mean? is basically if I am selling a counterfeit product and I see that happens a lot, let's say I go ahead and I source a Nike, Nike shoes, I go source it from China, not from authorized distributor, not from authorized a wholesaler, not from authorized, not from the brand themselves. I just go ahead, find from China, I get a fake one, sell it in. This is your infringing in a trademark and a patent itself. And that can cause you a lot of legal, illegal issues. And you don't want to get that. First, you can be, get your account shut down. You can, uh, your Amazon Solar Central shut down. You can get legal issues from uh, the, the government or from the brand itself can sue you for all the damages. So you don't wanna work with that at all. For example, I had one of my clients, he told me, oh, sad, I'm making, oh my God, I'm making 50 sales a day with this new product. I love it. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing, man. Good for you, blah, blah, blah. Then I go ahead and check out, he had a session with me and what he was selling, trolls. He was getting trolls from China, fake ones and selling them under the same listing as a new. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, but uh, the same factory, the factory told me they manufacture for Disney. So I thought it's normal. You cannot do that. If the manufacturer tells you, I source, uh, I manufacture products for uh, Disney, I do for, uh, Walmart or I do for Target or I do this for whatever it is for any big brands do not do it do not do it because you're not authorized even if the manufacturer if they, even if the same manufacturer produces product for that original brand 
do not do it. That's infringing. This is still trademark and patent violation. You don't want to do that. So this is the difference. And this is why you don't need, uh, need to make sure you check your products for patents and trademark to make sure you're not infringing or violating the product. Okay. All right, guys. So this is our useful website. Everything that you're going to see here right now, you are going to get it in your platform and Kajabi. You're going to see it in our members area. You're going to see all these websites. So I want to go through them right now and for us to see. So let's say USPTO.gov. Usually you want to go to trademark. I like to go through it here very easy. USPT, uh, USPT or trademark search. And I don't know why they didn't give that, but I'm going to give you that link because it's very hard to get here. And you come here and then you come here. So this is the website I want to, would like to give you guys because this is the one that is actually, let me just update the slides very quickly. So I make sure that you guys have this link instead of the other link. All right, so here, once I come here, let's say I'm finding a name for my brand. Let's say I'm talking about, uh, let's say Nike or Amazon FBA Giants or something like that. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna go to the basic, let me just go high. A basic word mark that's what we look for and then we're going to keep all the settings the same and we're just gonna put uh, let's say Nike if I put Nike and I go live it's going to see every word mark that's been live and been trademarked you see Nike connect got neck uh, Nike which is also <laughs> it's it's uh, trademark Nike connect Nike all the stuff is going to be trademarked for us most likely is gonna be one or two results at most or three or five, that's it. You're not gonna have all this. This is a big brand, so for sure you're going to have it. But let's say you wanna go ahead. Let's say let's say we have Amazon FBA Giants. I'm not trademarked for it. If I click it, it's gonna say, hey, there's no rec records were found to match that criteria. So I'm talking mostly here about a product that you are trying to find a brand name for yourself. You need to come in here first. You need to make sure that you see if it's uh, applicable or not. You see if there's a trademark on it or not. There's other thing here, which is a trick, especially when you do a trademark. If you put a brand name, like now I have a new brand into the toys section and my name, the brand name itself is actually, I got dead, which is not life. That means the trademark has been there, it's been expired and is not available anymore. If you have a trademark that dead and expired, you actually can hire a trademark attorney and will be very easy for you to revive that or make it life again. And it's gonna take you way shorter period of time than a product, uh, than a name that's brand new because you don't need to go through the process of uh, contesting. You don't need to go ahead and find all the other things that you need to do. So if you find something like that and see it dead, I will hire attorney and I will be able to get it uh, approved right away if you really want to go that route. For, for me, I think you should do IP accelerator and it's gonna be much faster for you to get the approval for enrolling in prime registry and also approval for a trademark. So having a dead is not a bad thing. I think it's a good thing if you find it, but if it's not, it's not. So a trademark here, it's really, really, really cool. And also, I think people were asking about brand name. So now, how are we going to find brand names? And this is really important. Now, remember last time I told you about you use name generators. Uh, so name generator, there's multiple of them here. So let's say, let's say I'm talking here. I'm just talking about Amazon. Let's say I'm putting FBA. Okay. If I put the name that I want, let's say I'm putting soccer, I'm putting camping, or let's say I put camping, you know. Let's say I'm putting camping. It's going to find me all the names that possibilities for me, things that I can find. It's gonna find me like, for example, friendly camping, it's going to get me camping dough, uh, butcher camping. You gotta find them, you gotta go through them and see which ones is really cool for you. Campingery or whatever it is, you're gonna find a lot of good cool names and you need to validate them first see if they're actually available or not which is i'm going to share with you how to be able to do it as well but let's say i'm looking for brand name right now 
and I'm looking through this stuff and I find uh, a name, I'm gonna go ahead and check it later on. But this one website for finding names and the other one that I really like, and remember I told you about is very, is this one, Fantasy Name Generator. I think this one is really cool, but it's gonna find you very, very weird names about planets, about fantasy names, pop culture, whatever you want here on the top. So let's say I'm looking for, I don't know, written Amazon names. Let's check Amazon names. You're gonna see all Amazon names here. You're gonna find weird names that means nothing, but could mean something. You remember when we talked about last modules, we talked about, hey, uh, find me a name that could mean something and can mean nothing because I'll be able to switch uh, categories or products very easily if the product means nothing. Now, by using stuff like that, the fantasy names, the place names, uh, there's also, um, you know, okay, you have company names, they have pop culture, they have planet names as well. Where's the planet? Yeah, planet names, okay, planet description, everything you need, aliens. Uh, and actually, if you look for a lot of things here, you're going to find a lot of names of cars and planets, which is a lot of people use. So you can use something here, be creative, play with that website very well and see if it's available or not. So I'm just going through things. Let's say they give me all these names, okay? Uh, you get get male, get female. So let's say, I don't know, this one means, I don't know what does it mean. So if I'm offending anybody right now by saying this name, Cosis, please, I don't even know, understand what it is. But uh, let's say I liked it, okay? I come here, I need to check it. I need to check if this is valid or not. Here, I'm, all I'm doing is not 100% approval that is actually this name's trademark or not. This just means that it's a good initial uh, search for me to be able to find a good name that's not being trademarked, okay? So the website I'm going to use, something called Name Checker. Name Checker, I can come here and put the name and it's going to populate everything that I need. It's going to tell me, hey, uh, Cosis is actually .com available, Cosis.com available, Cosis.net available. Let me get zoom in here a little bit more so you can see it. So Cosis.com uh, is available, .net is not available on Facebook, not available on Twitter, Tumblr is not available, Reddit is available, Slack, Twitch. It's gonna tell me all the social media that's available or not. Now, the things I care about the most, when I find a name, is going to be .com, because most of the time, if someone doesn't have the .com, usually they're not established business, or they're not, uh, they didn't take their business seriously, or they didn't uh, file for anything, okay? So that means .com usually is a very good thing to have. Facebook, I, if, like for example here, I couldn't find it, and it's not available, I can go ahead and check in Facebook. And I can check, hey, listen, do they have it in Facebook or not? So let me see here if I put a uh, course in Facebook, what happened? Uh, okay. So Facebook courses. And let's see, we have Kansas Cozy, Cozy, Cozy. There's not much, there's no groups here. So if you wanna find any groups, let's say here groups, let's see if there's any something with courses. You know, usually if there's any courses will be in the beginning and there's not much. So basically it's not there, but could someone use it for abbreviation of something? Now, for me, I don't care a lot about Facebook because the names, you can change them easy. You can put courses.inc or courses inc or courses outdoor, if I'm selling an outdoor, you'd be able to have it. The same thing with Twitter. Um, so I would like to have .com, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, YouTube. I don't know who use MySpace anymore. If you need Twitch, you go ahead. But for me, these are the most important. Now, .com, Facebook and Twitter, if they have it, it's good. If they don't, they don't. But is it good for me to go through it to see if this, what category they're selling and if they have that name? Then I'm going to check for Pinterest and YouTube. If all these are available, most likely nobody using that name. So I'm not fringing in anybody. Now I'm just trying to do this just to make sure that I am not, um, I'm just trying to reduce the amount of infringement. It doesn't mean 
you will 100% you'll be, oh my God, Sash showed me this. That means I'm good. I am not infringing anybody, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this for years and the way I'm doing it right now, I never get infringed. Okay, but if it happens, it could happen. But for me, that's the way I do it for free. If you want it to pay and to make sure 100%, you need to hire a trademark attorney for it to be good. Otherwise, it's not going, uh, you're not going to get the 100% answer. Okay? Now, this is for trademarks. This is for uh, getting your uh, names, checking them. You can find them here. You find the name, check it here. And then once you've done that, the next thing you're going to do is create logo. Now for logo, I'm all for hiring someone for logos, but this website is really, really cool. And I'm going to give you a tip of how to find, how to create your own uh, Legos. I'm not a big believer for you to do anything yourself. If something costs 10, 15 bucks, I think you should let someone else do it. 25 bucks, let someone else do it. Uh, but if you wanted to play with it, go ahead, do it. Why I'm suggesting this because the brand uh, that I'm launching in toys, I had to do my own because uh, apparently everyone on Fiverr and Upwork, they're having uh, COVID. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself because I'm in speed. So what I did here, let's say, let's say we get uh, courses again, get that name, come here, search. Here's going to give me multiple uh, ways of finding my brand. So I can come here. I want to use abstract. I want to use anything I want. I can come choose it. So I can choose the category that I want, what category I want. So let's say I'm getting into construction and let's say I'm using, let's say this one, add, it comes here. Once it comes here, you can switch things the way you want. You can come here, change the color if I want. Uh, let's say pink. Uh, I want to come here. I want to change the text. I can change it. Let's say sad. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sad, what did you do? Sad, what did you do? Okay. Sad. Sass. I'm a sassy. Sad. Oh, my God. I cannot even spell. What am I doing? Basim. And then let's say I want to give it more manly color. So manly color usually is going to be red for me or pink. That's very cool. I come here, choose that. I can change the circles. I can add text. I can add shapes. I can do everything I want here very easily. Now, uh, let's say I want to come here, find something. I just come, put it, and I'll be able to do Illuminati stuff. So everything you can do it here, you can save it and you can purchase it after $49.99. For me, what I did, and just to go around it, if instead of charging me 50 bucks to do the logo, what I do, I create it here, I take a screenshot of it, then I go to Fiverr and I tell the guy, replicate that for me. Once he replicated it for me, he's gonna charge me 15 bucks. And that's a small golden little hack if you really want to save money so for me i sat like here for two hours i made a nice logo and then i was like you know what it needs to be simple do not make it too hard make it something simple that can fit on the product and fits on you need to think about how it's going to look in the packaging how it's going to look on the product itself you don't want to make it too long you want to make it round so easier to stamp everywhere so for me i created it i went to uh fiverr and fiverr was able to created for me for $15 and I was good to go. $15, they gave me the files, they gave me the AI file, they gave me all the files that I need to be able to print that logo on a product or use it for commercial use. And I was good to go. All right, so this is how you build your brand, how you, how you, how you choose the brand name, how you be able to check and see if it's uh, available into .com, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and all the other social media that I told you about. That's going to eliminate any trademarks. And after that, you can do your logo. Now let's talk about patent a bit. Now for patent, as I told you, I am not a big fan of you uh, getting into product that patented. But for the sake of the example, I'm going to share with you some few tips that's going to help you. First of all, we have Google patent. Google patent is the best search engine for Google's and any for Google patents for any patent in Google. Now let's say let's get let's let's go ahead and take a product. Let's say I don't know water cup. I don't know. 
I'm just finding name from from me. So we get water cup. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, let's say I don't know. Um, let's say if anybody has example, they can throw it at me if they have it. If it's not, uh, let me see. Let's say self cooling. self container for lids. So you need to go through these and you need to click on them and see what kind of patterns or what kind of stuff are being patented. And that's the way you can go ahead and do it. For me, I don't like to go through it. If I want to go through this process, I can go through Google patent just to look very, very quickly, especially stuff that you find from as seen on TV. A lot of people would like to patent this or sorry, they would like to source that product. So I check them for patent first. Like for example, the cooling fan that goes around your neck, I wanna see if it's patented. I can come here and see if it's patented. I can so look at the designs, look at the images and see if there's any patent for them, all right? So you can check that here. The other way of doing it is basically, you can go ahead and hire an attorney, which is we all know, or you can hire someone from Fiverr to do a primary uh, research for that patent specifically. Now, anything Fiverr is going to tell you, do not take it as, oh my God, they're telling me the best. Oh, I'm going to agree with them. They're the best. No, you need to take it for a grain of a salt. Just think about it just to see yes or no. And that's it. But if you really, really want to get into it, attorney, 100% do it. The other way of doing it, which is, uh, let's say I'm coming to Amazon and let's say I'm doing, uh, let's see, I don't know what's that, but Let's see if we find anything. Okay. Most of the time, if I find a product, uh, if I find a product, I am going to see the search results. If I see my search results and I see a lot of the same product are being sold in the first page, second page, and they're being selling there for a long period of time, that means this product it most likely is not patented. Because if there's multiple sellers that selling the same product and they've been selling for a long period of time, if there was any patent on it, the patent, the original patent owner will go ahead and sue those people so he can get them out of it. So for me, I will check that. So I'll come in, for example, I'll check multiple competitors. I come to my Keepa or my chart here and I'll see when was the first time they sold the product or how long they've been in business. So I come here all time. And I'll check. They sell from 2017. So I'll, excuse me, I'll, say, I'll check this guy. I'll go ahead and check the second guy, third guy, fourth guy, and see when they have been selling this rock for how long. If this guy had been selling the rock for three years and nothing happened, why would we think that that's something is going to happen right now for me if I launch this product? It could happen. I have one of my friends who actually is selling a product for over uh, two years, and then he found out that the patent being issued later on, and he had to stop selling this product until he made an arrangement with the patent owner and giving them loyalty, royalty, sorry, loyalty, giving them royalties, and he was good to go. But most of the time, the private label products, most of the time, I'd say 90%, uh, if you go ahead and check it this way, you will eliminate the chance of you infringing on anybody, and you'll be good to go. So for me, I recommend doing that. If you really want to get deeper, if there's a lot of mold, there's customization going on, I would highly, highly recommend you hire someone to be able to do it. There's no way around it unless this. I have been doing this for a year, the same way I'm telling you, God forbid, thank God, nothing happened to me. Nothing, I never infringed anybody else's. I've been doing it for myself, I've been doing it for my clients, and there was a good way to do it. For me, I never had issue. Uh, and also you need to use your knowledge. If you see something design has Mickey Mouse on it, Mickey Mouse ears, you know it's not good, right? So you need to use your brain a bit, but most of the time, this is how I do it to be able to check my brand name, check, uh, do my logo. And if I have any patent, I check it first by Google patent. Then I will search it by going through Amazon, see how many listings are out there and how long they've been selling this product for. And then I can get my answer then. So 
And let me go back here. So this is, we covered this, all the stuff that I'm showing you right now, guys, you're going to have it in your members area. Members area is going to have the trademark address, gonna have the fantasy name generator, it's gonna have the business name generator, it's gonna have the name checker where you can check everything. There's another website with just similar name check. And also you can hire a trademark attorney to verify for you if you really wanna be 100% sure, it's gonna cost money. Uh, then I have for patents, you have Google patent, you have to search on Amazon as how I showed you, or you can hire a patent attorney to verify for you and for the logo, as I showed you, free logo design.org. You'd be able to create a logo if you're on a tight budget, get the logo, send it to Fiverr or Upwork, and they will generate for you for 15 bucks or 20 bucks and you're good to go. So this is it. So let's talk about what we're going to see next session, which is I think all of you are waiting for its next session is going to be product research. The next video is going to be about product research. So I highly recommend you be there. I highly recommend you can make it and we're gonna get deeper and we things are gonna get better and better and better.